of you, only one of me There's a million of those who won't let us be But they're not gonna, not gonna see me bleed Cause baby, I got you, 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 you I've been beaten to the ground, dragged across the dirt I've been scared to live cause some people never learn But they're not gonna, not gonna watch me burn Cause baby, I got you, 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 you Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Desert Adventures in Arizona. Hope everybody's doing well on this special day. Let's see who we have here today. First one in the house, and my, one of my moderators is Rose. Good morning, good morning, Rose. Good to have you. Rose is sounding like a nomad. Ringo and Zara are here. Good morning. Good morning. Good to have you. First member in the house, Gracie and Jock's Adventures. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, I'm uh, using a new microphone. So if you guys could put some ones in the chat if I sound okay, or if you need it, think it needs to be higher or lower, let me know. Janice from Oz is here. Good morning, good morning, good to have you. Look at that, we got Jane Bray in the house. Wow, Debbie F is here. Good morning, Debbie, good to have you. Scrolling, scrolling. Everybody's saying hello. One Jaws Jr., Scott is here. Glad to have you, Scott, hope you are doing well. I saw on Ann's uh, post that you guys were a little under the weather, so hopefully you're feeling better soon. Lorna is here. Good morning, Lorna. Scrolling, scrolling. Everybody's saying hello. Make sure I didn't miss anybody. There's Ava Potterfield and friends. Good morning, Ava. <clears throat> Always start Monday mornings off with Ava and a cup of coffee. Always a nice way to start the morning. Let me turn that around. This is a left-handed cup. I wish they would do it the other way when they print these things. I guess I set it up wrong. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for the shout out, Ava. 
Appreciate it very much. <clears throat> ah, I know what the background is all about. So in Southern Arizona, we were lucky to see SpaceX take off on a Starlink mission. And that's Ragged Top behind me. And we uh, we got to see it fly pretty much off to the western skyline there. So that was pretty neat. I did put a video up for members on my channel that uh, has three different views of the uh, Starlink. It, it's SpaceX Falcon 9 is, is what flew by. They put 22 new Starlink satellites up. And anyway, we got to watch it go by, and it was pretty pretty good treat. There's Lily T. Good morning, Lily. Lily and Pippi. Scrolling, scrolling. Uh, beer goggles, huh? No beer goggles. You got to have these goggles, right? We got these uh, last time, the last eclipse that came through. And uh, when I put them on, I can't see you guys. But I wanted to show you what they look like. So... We don't look at the sun unless we have some protection, right? Because it might hurt your eyes. Scrolling, scrolling. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. <clears throat> Appreciate that. Nothing wrong with left-handers, Janice says, right? I'm no good with my left hand. Oh, those, those springtime colds are tough. They are tough. Tommy's in the house. Good morning, good morning. Don't work too hard, Tommy. There's TGIF. Good morning, good morning. Happy Monday. Scott, give our regards to Ann. Uh, Ann usually does a Sunday drive uh, video and uh, because you guys were under the weather, she didn't do that. So give her regards to Ann J. Working and listening. Scrolling, scrolling. Uh, Rose is dropping links for everybody. Thank you, Rose. And then Van Life Voyages is here. This is Tanya listening in the background. So we're going to raid Tanya. At uh, 9 o'clock Pacific, she's got a live stream scheduled. And if you look at her thumbnail, it's a little concerning. So maybe we should go see what's going on. All right. So Roy and Becky um, lost one of their fur babies recently. Uh, they lost Jasper a few days ago. <clears throat> so, you know, it's not easy to to lose one of your pets. And uh, Roy was especially close to Jasper. So keep them in your thoughts and prayers. They're going to take a break from live streaming uh, until they get kind of back to normal. Or as normal as you can be after losing one of your fur babies. So we'll uh, we'll be here whenever they're ready to jump back in to the mix and uh, we'll support them when they're ready so keep them in your in your thoughts and prayers if you would many of us in here have pets and they mean a lot to us so it's tough when you lose them thanks lily Oh, you're an hour earlier tonight. It's only 1 a.m. in the morning. Ooh. The only time I'm, I see 1 a.m., Janice, is when I got to get up and use the bathroom. <laughs> Fox Fan D is here. My gosh, she is early, too. Good morning. Imagine I got up before 8, but I'm sleepwalking. <laughs> 
Dee saw that as a channel member, she was my very first channel member, and she saw the video that I posted for members on Starlink, and she thought it was pretty cool. I worked really hard on it and uh, wanted to share it with uh, channel members first to make sure that they get to see it. All right, what's going on? Uh, traveling on adventures, I forgot to look and see if they had a live stream scheduled, but uh, they were doing live streams after Roy and Becky at noon. I'm not sure if they're doing it today, so we'll look for them. Oh, I see my bed. That's because you're hanging out over here in the U.S. Lucas is doing well. He's doing well. I had to run out and play some ball with him a little while ago <clears throat> to get him to get him uh, happy. So uh, he's doing well, doing well. All right. So it's Eclipse Day in the U.S. here. We have here in Arizona, we're going to see part of it. Not the whole thing. I know a lot of people are traveling. And uh, I think Ray from Van Life Rocks is going to live stream during the eclipse. Here's the path. And I don't know if you're on the phone, if you, you may not be able to see it, but here's the path of it. Uh, down here on the left, uh, let's see, no, on the right is April 8th. The left is back in October. We saw a really good view of it back then. And then today, the 8th, we're just going to see about 64% of it. So a lot of folks are traveling to Texas that live over here in the western part of the country. And uh, there's a lot of people camped out waiting to see it. There's Roy and Becky. Good morning, good morning. Let me get that off of there. Anyway, that's the eclipse for today. It's interesting. Uh, Oki and I were talking about how the Native Americans treat the eclipse. Now, they didn't have sunglasses. They didn't have eye protection uh, like like we do <clears throat> back in the day, and especially the Navajos. You know, the Navajos came uh, 800 to 1,000 years ago is when they arrived down here in the Southwest, and they didn't have these things. So what did they do during the eclipse? Well, they stayed inside. And it's interesting how they view the eclipse. And I want to share something with you here um, from the Navajo Nation. And watch this for just a second. Let me make sure I get over there. Uh, share screen. Okay, I'm going to play this for you. This is the Navajo, Native American Navajo beliefs when it comes to the, the sun and the eclipse. Eclipse is, they say, which is to say the sun has died. During that time, we have to show reverence and respect to the order that the holy people have established. That has to occur to put everything back in balance. And it is also a time when we as the children of the holy people have to make new promises, new commitments uh, to the holy people as to how we live our lives. <laughs> In the teachings of our people, we say when we greet one another, 
And that means on the surface of Mother Earth and everything in the universe is good. The universal hand sign among native people was to point to the heart and then open the hand and move the hand away and say that from my heart, everything on the surface of Mother Earth is good. So the word yat eh that we use as a greeting means it is good. But the uh, teaching that we're going to share with you is concerns the eclipse. But the teachings of our people concerning the eclipse, there are many, many teachings in that associated with the uh, event of the, the solar eclipse. It is that we are told that we as a people, the Neh, we came from above. And then we came down to the surface of Mother Earth. And that's what the name that we call ourselves, Deh, Neh, the Neh is what we call ourselves. And that means from above to the surface of Mother Earth. And so the uh, relationship that we have or have to have is with not only our families and our kinship of people, but also we have a kinship to Mother Earth and to Father Sky. And so it is very important to be aware of what happens in the Yadatkif is what we call the sky or the universe or the void and also we call uh, the mother earth the surface place and so the teachings that apply to our observation of the uh, eclipse is to know that the most powerful thing in our existence that we can see and touch and taste and feel and all these different things actually have their source from the sun and the sun is actually, when our prayers are said by our old people, they say, which is to say, the sun, my father. But a lot of people don't understand that the sun, as we see it in the sky, is a symbol of the maker, of the father of us all. It is a symbol. And so the sun gives light and it lights up everything. And it makes it so that we have to understand without the sun, there is no life. And so that brief moment when we recognize the sun and uh, as a symbol of our creator or our maker, we call the sun Shatka, which is to say my father. And the uh, teaching is that the Father is the one that provides all things for us as the five-finger being. He provides us with joy, happiness, confidence, and peace. But we have to decide if we want joy, happiness, confidence, and peace. is what we are told. And the eclipse is, they say, which is to say, the sun has died. And so during that particular time where the sun has died, there is a lot of symbol and symbolism and teachings and that associated with that event. It is that during that time, we have to show reverence and respect to the order that the holy people have established. And so that has to occur to put everything back in balance and realignment. And it is also a time when we as the, the children of the holy people have to make new promises, new commitments uh, to the holy people as to how we live our lives. And so the um, event after the uh, the solar eclipse occurs, that it is like a coming back to life, a rebirth, and the uh, time when we have to recognize that at some point in time, we will all pass into the next world, we will die but we also have to understand that we will be made alive again and we will be renewed in the next world. And so the teachings are in alignment with the teachings of the holy people as to show us that the sun dies and then the sun comes back to life. So the sun dies and is reborn again after the eclipse. 
Interesting thought, huh? I thought that was interesting. I hope it's okay to share with you. I grew up <clears throat> down here in southern Arizona, and the Navajo people were a big part of my childhood. I grew up around them and spent time with them. Uh, my parents worked with many Native American folks. And, uh, and so it's interesting to see how they view the eclipse. And hopefully that's okay. Now, the Navajos have been around a long time. Like I said, they've been around 800 to 1,000 years. They actually originated in Asia, crossing into North America during the previous Ice Age. They're primarily in the Southwest in what is now New Mexico, Utah, Arizona, and Colorado. And very interesting people, very interesting. A lot of their... Uh, they sell a lot of their wares up in uh, northeastern Arizona, northwestern Arizona. They have a lot of jewelry that they sell that they make up there. So if you've seen those places on the side of the road, a lot of those up in northern Arizona are Navajo people. All right. So Janice says, uh, not going to see it in Australia. All right, there's Naj in the house. Good morning, Naj. Never late, never late. Appreciate your membership and your support. There's Traveling Merton and Sue, another channel member. Good morning, good morning. They're enjoying their new solar system on their rig and sounds like it's working pretty well. There's their channel. Scrolling, scrolling. Talca Detector is here. Good morning, good morning. Thank you, thank you. California Travel Videos is here. Popped in, coming in to say hello to Michael and Gracie. Good to have you. There's their link. Yeah, I thought it's pretty fascinating, Lorna, to, you know, I think the, a lot of people live around Native Americans. And as the video goes on, he said that the Navajo actually teach their people to stay inside during the eclipse. What do we do? Uh, we run outside and we look at it because it's, you know, it's a scientific event, and we're into science. The Native Americans are uh, irreverent people, and they're interested in basically reflecting on their life. Here comes Lucas to say hi. Lucas, come here. Come here. Lucas wants to say hi to everybody, so here he is. There's Lucas. Oh, yeah. He's huffing and puffing, so Mama was out there playing with you, huh? Was Mama out playing with you? Yeah. yeah. All right. Happy boy. Happy boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. So Lily was asking earlier. He's doing well, doing really well. So they look at the eclipse a little different than us in that, you know, it's a time for reflection and uh, and looking forward in your life, uh, a new opening, a renewal, number of different words they use. And so I thought that was interesting to share. I don't know if I said hi, but good morning, Bree. Good to have you. There's Grandma Kelly. Yeah, it's morning already. Morning already. Good to have you. Good to have you. And <clears throat> she does a live stream on Tuesday mornings, working on moving into her farmhouse up there that she just bought and working on fixing it up, getting things working. So 
Uh, she's sharing a lot of videos on how that progress is going. And you can see she's quite popular. Everybody loves Grandma Kelly. She's a great supporter, including my channel. And a channel member. All right, make sure I didn't miss anything. Catherine Cook just popped in. Uh-oh. <clears throat> Had a sick puck bee because he got into the garbage. Ooh. Yeah, we know how that goes. So the Navajo um, also participated as code talkers. They were in helping the Marines back in World War II translate messages back and forth using their native language. And the Japanese were never able to break the code of the Navajo language as they passed messages back and forth using their native language, it was very successful. So the Navajo really helped during World War II um, basically win the war. Look at that. We got Mellow Nomadic Adventures in the house. Good morning, Marshall. Good to have you. Hope you're doing well. Marshall's been working hard. And uh, working on his uh, website and working on his ebook. Steve and Tina Jewell here. Hello, hello. Good to have you. Watched their live stream yesterday. On Sunday, they have a live stream. Also, Traveling Merton and Sue have a live stream every Sunday, too. It's two o'clock uh, Arizona time. And always an interesting conversation, so be sure to check them out. All right, what else we have? Oh, yeah, had a surprise delivery. <clears throat> I'm going to reach over this way. So Oki and I were out tending to our yard and playing with Lucas. And this lady drives up. To the gate with this with an orchid and she delivers this orchid we weren't expecting an orchid or a flower delivery and so it came from this Eric's flower shop in the Tucson area in in Midtown Tucson and we're like, what is going on here? So I open the card up and it says, thank you for giving our team the opportunity to care for you from Dr. Martin and Dr. Coles. Those are my dentists. So you know that when they're sending you thank you cards, you spend some money there, right? <laughs> And I did. I had some dental work done. I had, I had, uh, I had an abscess tooth. And like a lot of men, uh, we kind of tend to ignore things. And I ignored this abscess tooth because it went away. It hurt like the Dickens for a few days. I took some. Uh, a leave and tie it all, got rid of the pain. And I said, okay, we're good. And I went on and on and on. And it turned out that I had re remaining infection in there. And so it ate away some of the bone in the, in the jawline up here. <clears throat> so I went in and finally got it addressed. And this, um, these dentists, um, did some work on me and, and got me straightened out again. Got a couple of root canals, a post with a new fake tooth soon to come. And uh, so they took very good care of me. And that's a great way to, to say thank you. 
you know, it's not a whole lot of money, but they sent this lady out many miles. She probably drove 40 miles from their shop to deliver this to the gate and to say thank you from the dentist. And she passed that on. So that was really nice, nice of them. And that it gives you a good feeling when when they care enough about your business where they're going to send you something like that to say, you know, thank you, appreciate it. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> that's true. I did spend a lot of money. You know, if you guys have to get a a, a tooth pulled, what do you do? A lot of times, you know, they just make a bridge, right? They connect two teeth together. You get a fake tooth in the middle. And and in this area here, this is where I do a lot of my chewing. And they said a bridge would probably work, but a post would be better if you want to try that. And since I have, I do have dental coverage that pays about 50% of it. And I pay good money for that every month. I decided, well, I'm going to go ahead and get a post put in. It's a long process to do that. Long process. Um, you know, you, you have to get rid of the infection. They remove the tooth. They had to go in and, and take it out with surgery. You have to wait six weeks for it to heal. They put a bone piece of bone graft in there because I was missing bone. There wasn't enough there. Another six weeks to wait for that to heal. Then they just drilled the hole for the post, screwed the metal post in. Now they got to wait another six weeks before they can put the tooth on top of it. Meanwhile, I'm chewing it on the other side. But when I'm all done, I should be good. And, you know, when they were doing these implants, that's what it's called. Uh, when they were doing these implants a few years ago, it was pretty well um, not covered. It was not covered by dental insurance, but now it is. And so that makes it a lot easier to decide um, to do it. So I'm happy about that. Yeah, the only thing I get from the dentist is a big bill. I know this is like five grand for the total procedure. And uh, this guy actually gave me a uh, pretty good discounts. I think, I don't know this for a fact, but just looking around some of the dental offices that I've been visiting, I think people are putting off their dental work. And a lot of that has to do with the economy, the situation that many of us are in uh, with inflation and having to prioritize what do you prioritize? Well, you got to get the lights, keep the lights on. You got to make the house payment. Um, the water's got to stay on, all your utilities. And one of the things that we put off, and I've done it too, is those big expenses for dental care. And a lot of times you just can't afford it. And so you suffer through it, do the best you can and hope it heals on its own. In my case, it did not. And I know that when the lady at the front desk called the people that do the root canals, the ortho, uh, she, I knew it was bad when they said, this guy needs to get in right away because he's got a huge abscess. And I'm like, oh, so it is bad. You know, when the lady at the front desk says that, then you should probably pay attention. Anyway, I'm, I'm much better. No teeth on the bottom and no bone left. Yeah, see, that's <clears throat> that's what I'm trying to prevent. And that's what many of us, you know, have to put up with. And then that's what uh, dentures are for, right? You end up with dentures and you just do the best that you can. I'll have a word with them. <laughs> There's a story there somewhere. 
Okay. I have to go to town with the lady I'm staying with. Okay, Rose, you take care. Thanks for coming in. Same here, a, a bill, a reminder for the next visit, right? <clears throat> I know, I know. It's, you know, and, and the thing we have to remember, which I have to remind myself, is that this is real close to your brain. And when you have infection in your mouth, um, it can actually transfer around your body or get into your brain. And so it's a tough decision sometimes to, you know, to spend that money. But now I'm glad I did because I, I did put it off. And of course, Oki, Oki uh, is upset with me because I don't complain too much about pain. But I'm glad now that the pain is gone, I'm feeling pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Step Van Dan is here, another channel member, saying hello from Minnesota. Boy, it should be warming up. Oh, I know, Dan, I know. Three bad teeth. I have, I had two, actually three up here. I had root canals done on two of them on each side and then had to have one extracted because there was not you know, any bone left to keep it in place. So I know the feeling, Dan, I know the feeling. Now, some dentists around here, and you guys tell me if that's the case, will let you make payments. And I've done that in the past. Um, so maybe that's an option too of making payments over time. But you take care of the priorities, right? And a lot of times, you know, it's keeping the lights on, keeping the roof over your head, keeping gas in your vehicle so you can get back and forth to work. Yeah. Somehow I still have my teeth and you have good genes, right? <clears throat> I have, uh, I've had bad teeth most of my life. Even growing up, I had bad teeth. Just not not terribly bad, but I was prone to cavities. And then when I went into the Air Force in 1974, they filled all my cavities and took care of my teeth for 20 years and fixed me up. Uh, so that continues, you know, it's a lifetime thing for me to take care of my teeth. Now, Oki has good, healthy teeth. And I think it has to do with the enamel that sh that you have on your teeth. And she has hard enamel, so she doesn't get cavities. She goes year after year uh, to her checkups, and uh, she comes back clean most of the time. Yeah, like I said at the beginning, Roy and Becky uh, lost Jasper a couple of days ago. We all know that's hard. Uh, many of us that have pets have suffered through that a few times. So we're keeping you guys in our thoughts and prayers. And uh, I let everybody know that you're taking a little break. Ooh, 45. Let's see what we are here. Hey, Siri, what's the weather here today? Expect partly cloudy skies today. Daytime temperatures will hover around 72 degrees, with overnight lows around 46. 72, that's just about perfect. Here comes Lucas again. He popped in to say hi again. Huh? Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He says, Dad, I'm still here. Don't forget me. We've got a play date when you're done. Yeah. I want you to come out and play with me when you're done, Dad. All right. Okay, I promise, Lucas, I promise. <clears throat> Excuse me, nobody in my family has teeth. Yeah, it's, it's the way it is. Oh, wow, <clears throat> rickets, huh? Ah. Yeah, a lot of folks go to Mexico, and uh, I think Jane Bray did that, too, when she was down here uh, just prior to the meetup. 
She went down and got a lot of work done down in Mexico. And I understand it's about half price down there. Ah, uh, you'll do fine, D. You can do it, D. You can do it. Just think on the other side after you get those teeth pulled. That's going to take care of the issue. That's about what it's taken me, Gracie. Starting at noon, huh? Gusty winds and quartz, I'd imagine that. <clears throat> see, see if we're going to have some down here. <clears throat> it looks like we're good. I always look at my forecast on my uh, on my drone forecast. It's green, so you can't see it, but it looks like we're we're in good shape. We're going to have you know, 15, 18, 20 mile per hour winds, which is not too bad for here. Still flying, good flying weather. Ringo says 68, no clouds. Yeah, we had clouds early this morning, but uh, looks like it's clearing up now. And I think our eclipse is going to start at 10.08 this morning, and then will last about an hour. You will not chicken out, D. All right, D, we're getting you some encouragement. I always question people that didn't have teeth telling me how to take care of my teeth. <clears throat> yeah, that's the going through that and having teeth pulled is no fun. 51. I will be 59. Winter's around the corner. So Janice is. Across the pond there, finishing up summer, heading into winter. Yep. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, and Jasper, Jasper was uh, was Roy's when Roy did, did uh, took off to do chores, to empty trash, pick up water. Uh, Jasper was always riding with them. That was uh, that was what you saw when Roy was running errands. Was Roy and Jasper out running around? Oh, okay. That's nice of you, Gracie. That's nice to have that support right there. So Scott says the majority of the clips will have some cloud cover except for upper New York State and up through Maine. So some cloud cover is okay. It would be better if it was clear, but you have to deal with what Mother Nature brings you. Yep. Good luck tomorrow, D. You're going to do it. You're going to take care of it. <clears throat> Just think you're going to be done with that pain if you're getting two teeth pulled out. It's because they need to come out. And so get it done and then come out on the other side. And you'll be in much better shape. Grabbling Merton and Sue saying hello to Naj. All right, what else is on my list? <clears throat> so, no pain, dental work. Did you guys uh, hear about that earthquake in New Jersey? It was a 4.8 magnitude earthquake. I guess uh, New York City got rattled too. They were having a meeting at the United Nations there in New York City, and they even got rattled a little bit there, freaked everybody out. Oh, you're welcome, D. You're welcome. There was no major damage, I understand it. Um, 
some cracks in some sidewalks, things like that, shook up a lot of people. But no, no major damage. And then ar around the same time, there was a, uh, a storm that came through <clears throat> in lightning struck the Statue of Liberty. So somebody got a picture of it. Isn't that cool? I guess it gets hit by lightning quite often. Here's another shot. It's the tallest structure around, so I guess it's hit quite often. But I thought that was neat. So many people took pictures of it. Right over someone's golf course. Yeah. See, our view is here. Another channel member. Good morning. Good morning, Tim, Gracie, and Crystal. Good to have you. <clears throat> you guys going to be checking out the eclipse here around 10 o'clock or so, somewhere after. Misha Lee is here. Good morning. Good morning. Coming to us from Virginia. Pretty amazing huh? technology we're on here, huh? We can talk around the world. We got Janice here from over the pond. We got California travel videos here. Prayers for Miss D. Thank you, Naj. Thank you. Naj from Florida. And here we are all in the same little cubby hole, chit chatting. What else is going on? <clears throat> Oh, yeah, that you, you guys remember hearing about that particle accelerator? I don't even know exactly where it is, somewhere in the U.S. And I guess today they're smashing atoms today. So all kinds of things going on, smashing atoms during the eclipse. I don't know what's going to happen there. So that's everything on my list. Got my glasses ready to go. We'll be looking at the eclipse, checking it out. I wonder if I could take pictures through this. Maybe I'll try. And then I remember in school, we used to make a box or a piece of paper. You'd take a piece of paper and punch a hole in it and then shine it up there, and then you could see the eclipse on, on the ground. Nita's cooking show is here. Hello, hello. She's coming to us from over the pond, too. Good to have you. Saying hello. <clears throat> you know, I was doing a little reading yesterday. And uh, these little uh, odd things that maybe you didn't know. Not many people go to the library anymore because everything is online now. But did you know that most libraries have trouble with people stealing books? And the book that's most stolen is the Guinness Book of World Records. Is the book that the libraries lose the most often. I thought that was interesting. And then as we're getting into spring, the critters are stirring around, the ants are building their ant hills. And I read yesterday that ants never sleep. Did you know that ants never sleep? Now I know I've walked out and looked at ant hills before at night and they were not active or they were really slow but I didn't know that they never sleep. 
Something else I learned yesterday was, you know what the strongest muscle in your body is? Your tongue, according to this website. Probably because I'm wagging my tongue and I'm eating all the time. For those people that are watching their weight like me, when the moon is directly overhead, you actually weigh a little bit less. Did you know that? I guess it's the gravitational pull. Did you know that Bruce Lee was so fast, they actually had to slow down the film so that you could see his moves? Did you see that? That was pretty interesting. Who invented the telephone? Alexander Graham Bell. Did you know that he never called his wife or his mother? Because they were both deaf. Did you know that butterflies taste with their feet? Hmm. I didn't know that. You know, watching the uh, old movies, you see the the cowboys that stray into quicksand and they sink and they're swallowed up by quicksand. Well, you can actually raise your legs and lay on your back and you won't sink into quicksand. Did you also know that your stomach has to produce a new layer of mucus every two weeks to protect itself? Yeah, I thought that was interesting. We had scorpions here in southern Arizona. In fact, I'll show you a picture. There's one. This is right out the back door underneath a pot. This guy was pretty good size. You can see the stinger on him. And I learned yesterday that if you take a tiny amount of liquor and drip on a scorpion, it will instantly go mad and sting itself to death. <clears throat> I might have to try that. I might have to try that. We all know that chocolate is not good for dogs, as it contains theobromine, which affects their heart and nervous system. Now, this one I'm a little skeptical about. Your foot is the same length as your forearm. That's the same as my foot. Could be, could be. Your thumb is the same length as your nose. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Also, the length of your lips is the same as your index finger. Yeah, I guess that's true. You didn't know you were going to learn so much today. Did you know that dogs and cats, like humans, are either right or left-handed? And we've noticed that with Lucas. When you go to shake and tell him to shake, he always picks up the right leg first before the left. Dogs and cats, like humans, are either right or left-handed. I thought that was interesting. The bees are out now. And they're pollinating our fruit trees right now. And I learned yesterday that it takes approximately 2 million flowers for a bee to make one pound of honey. So next time you buy some honey, remember that took a lot of work for those, those bees to make that honey. Did you know that a normal size paper can be folded in half no more than seven times. I think I may have to try that. And the last thing on my list, which I didn't know, the liquid inside young coconuts can be used as a substitute for plasma, for blood plasma. I wonder if Gracie's ever heard of that. The liquid inside young coconuts can be used as a substitute for blood plasma. 
Yeah, that's a good looking scorpion there, huh? Ah, good point, Dan. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it would be, uh, it probably is not good for them. But, you know, anything that's close to the house that is a risk to us, if they take off, they live another day. If they don't, then uh, I take care of them. A uh, gallon of scorpion venom is worth a millions, millions of dollars. I believe it because who's going to milk a scorpion? Land Cloud Adventures is here. Hello, Nate and Paula. Good to see you. Dang, Roy, start collecting, Gracie says. I don't know about that. Oh, yeah, honey, right? I love me some honey. Do you guys have uh, honey that you can buy that's local? We we have a lot of uh, stands, a lot of stores down here. <clears throat> a lot of areas we drive through, there are, uh, you know, those boxes with uh, beehives. And these beekeepers move them around. And then you can buy locally made honey. And supposedly, that honey that you buy locally is supposed to help your allergies. Um, I don't know if it does or not, but I mean, it sounds good. It makes sense. Honey is great for everything antiseptic. I even put it on burns. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so we're at 59 minutes. Uh, somebody uh, could drop a fresh link for Tanya, Van Life Voyages. Otherwise, it's pinned up at the top. And then I didn't see a thumbnail for Roy and Becky, so I'm assuming that they're going to pass today. And uh, we'll stand by whenever they're ready. We'll be there to watch. Uh, honey helps with a ton of stuff. Yep. And then we will, good for allergy. So you heard the same thing, Naj, huh? That's what we hear down here, too. All right. Marshall's wishing everybody a great eclipse day. I think, uh, I think our eclipse is starting in about an hour and eight minutes. So sometime after Tanya's live. We'll uh, pop out and take a look at it. So thanks, everybody, for being here today. Appreciate it very much. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>